Hi, I'm Tom. Welcome to the Red Barn. Today, I'm going to build this tilt-out wastebasket cabinet. If you'd like to see how I did it, stay tuned. So before I can begin, I have to select some good quality stock to work from. The depth of this cabinet is going to be about 12 and a half inches um, so hopefully I'll find boards that are that that deep or that wide if not I'll have to take two narrower boards and edge glue them to make the larger board so I'm gonna run out to where I store my wood and see if I can find what I need so here are the plans that I drew up for this particular project um, nothing fancy these exact same plans will be available in the description below and free of charge. And uh, but in it the uh, and I also have a SketchUp drawing that'll be included with it. But in that SketchUp drawing is a seam that just brings up all the dimensions, and that's the uh, this is going to be the drawing that I work off of today. I couldn't find anything that was wide enough, so I picked out a few boards that matched pretty closely to one another. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and mill this down to my finished thickness, which will be three quarters of an inch, um, and then I will build the carcass out of these three pieces. Um, but before I can do any milling or anything, I gotta cut these down to rough width, and I'll do that at my chop saw. Since I am making this out of pallet wood, albeit very high quality pallet wood, there still are some holes left behind by the screws that were used to put the pallets together. So I'm going to work around those and cut out these bad sections. So, all of these boards have a very slight cup to them. There's a couple ways I can deal with it. They're a little too wide for my jointer. So, option number one would be just to take very light passes on the, uh, on the planer because they're, they're very straight, they're just cupped. I could do that and hopefully the light passes would keep it from compressing the cup cutting it and then when it releases the pressure it would just go back into its cup. Or I could take the guard off my jointer and <clears throat> I could pass what material I, that would make it through the jointer and then use a piece of melamine that's exactly the six inch width of the jointer blade and have the board ride on that melamine as it goes through the planer and that would make it uh, parallel to the jointed part and then once that once the opposite edge is flat then I can flip it over and finish off the jointed edge. I'm gonna go that route just because I think it'll give me a better result. I know it may not make sense right now what I just explained but hopefully by watching what I do it'll become more clear to you.
now you can see that only six inches of this board has been jointed or is flat. So now I need to rig up a sled to go through that guy. Now that I have this one side perfectly parallel to the jointed side, or this jointed portion of this side, I can pass it through the, the planer one last time, or a few times, whatever it takes to get my final thickness of this board. Now I'm going to joint one edge so that it is square to the face. Okay, so now I've got my stock that I'm going to glue together to make my boards. And then I use the offcuts to create the material that's going to make up the rails and styles of the door frame. Next, I'm going to glue and clamp these boards together.